Well, today we're going to talk to you about mounting an ICF system on a Gehringhoff corn head. And when you get your ICF system from us aftermarket, you're going to get it in a crate like this. It's going to come with all of these parts in here. And also in there, there's going to be a listing of the parts that are in here, and an assembly manual and a parts manual. And the first thing you want to do when you get this kit is you want to unpack all this crate, lay everything out, make sure that we've sent everything that you need for this, check against the list, look at the parts book, and just make sure that it's all here. Today we're going to talk about installing an ICF kit on a folding head. And one of the first things you want to do when you get one of these kits, you get it all unpacked out of the crate that it comes in, lay it all out, get familiar with all the parts you have. Uh, this being a folding head, we have two arms. We can only put an ICF in the middle section. We're do, not able to put uh, the reel and the paddles all the way out to the outside wings. So you're going to have two arms, a uh, center tube for mounting the paddles to, a support tube that runs across the back between the two arms, and other miscellaneous parts that all put the system together. There are going to be some parts in here that you're going to use on the, your installation and some parts that you may not. So you go to your uh, assembly manual, look at the chart for the particular head you're working on, whether it's a 1230, 630, 830, 1630, 1820. It all, everyone's going to be a little different as to uh, what parts we may or may not use. So, We'll kind of talk about that as we go through the installation here. Uh, some of the parts we have here we won't use in this particular installation and uh, other parts we'll use. So, uh, With that, we're going to get started putting this on. One of the first things we're going to do, we're going to check to see if our head has mounting brackets on it. If the mounting brackets for the ICF system are already on the head, uh, that takes care of our first step. If not, we're going to have to bolt some brackets onto here and there's a chart in the assembly manual that's going to give us the dimensions as to where those uh, brackets get mounted onto the main frame. And we measure from the center of the head out and following the instructions in the manual, it's going to give us the dimension where we mount them. So we'll start with that. And when we do that, we'll find our location, we'll mark it, we're going to mark where those brackets go. We're going to grind some paint off the frame. We're going to weld those brackets later on in the installation, but to start with, we're just going to bolt them in place. But we'll grind the paint off now so that we're ready for that later on. And then we'll be ready to start doing the assembly of the system itself. Starting here in the center, this particular head is welded right here with the tubes right in the center, so I've already got it located. Otherwise, find a place to measure from locate the center of the frame, mark it, and make your measurement. So, right there. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to get these spots ready. So I've got my marks here. I held my bracket in place and marked my outside edges of the bracket. These brackets, when we're all done with assembly, are going to be welded in place. For now, when we're doing the initial assembly, it's bolted. For the final welding, we're going to want to have all this paint removed. So before you mount any brackets, take a, and remove this paint. I've used a flap wheel on a hand grinder, but just take the paint off here, take the paint off of the ma matching surface on the brackets. Once you've done that, we're ready to mount the brackets in place. So here, I have a bracket that's mounted in place. The important thing to look at with these brackets when you're putting them on is this is an oval tube and the bracket is formed to fit fairly closely. So when you're putting it on, make sure that we get the bracket as tight to this uh, oval tube as we can. Once we're sa satisfied that we're pretty close, tighten these bolts up, hold it in place and we repeat that process all the way across for all four brackets. If this is a two-arm head, then we just have the two center brackets. Um, the reason we're not going to weld this right now is that just in case something isn't quite where we want it to be, we may have to reposition these just a little bit 
one way or the other through the, the process. So we want to leave these so we have that option that we can move them if we have to. Um, so for now, just tighten them up. We've got our brackets mounted on the head here. Uh, we're ready to start the assembly. Uh, one thing to be, take into account is some of these parts are heavy. So you know, have a crane or a helper to help lift the heavier parts and get them positioned, particularly the, the two arms, and uh, work safely. Wear protective gear as you need. The first step we have to do now after we've got our brackets in place is to install our arms. And one thing to note about the brackets is there is a left and a right to them as they come pre-assembled to you. It's not a, a big deal if you mix them up. The difference being that there's a plate mounted to the left hand side for mounting a sensor. And if you happen to mount the left bracket to the right side, you just have to move that plate from that bracket to the other side. Uh, but it comes pre-assembled so you kind of know where it goes and how it should look. So we're gonna get started. We'll get the uh, arms mounted next and then we'll get the, move on to the next steps. Need to go up a little bit. Down. There we go. So we've installed our arms on the machine here. They're secured with pins that go in through here. And then there's a flat plate here with a hole for a bolt. And we secure the pins to the brackets using these bolts. So our next step after we have our arms mounted and secured is to put this support tube in. When you receive it, it comes pre-assembled with the hydraulic lines and the uh, end pieces already on here. We're going to have to disassemble this side here, just remove these bolts and the bolt that holds the clamps here. We'll slide this tube out. We'll slide that end in through the arm. And then we'll slide this end in through the arm and we'll connect the two back together and re-clamp re the hydraulic hoses. When we're putting these uh, tubes in on this side, we need to add one of these eccentric rings on each side. So that when we're done, we're going to have the eccentric ring here on this side and the same on that arm there. And then we're going to add another one on this side so that each arm has two rings that are going to lock this, this tube in place. So we'll go ahead and we'll get this mounted. After we've got our support tube in place, we want to get it so it's centrally located between the two arms that's relatively the same space from, say, the splice here or this bracket in the frame. It's, it's not really critical, but it's going to look nicer to be centrally located. Once we have it in place, 
We'll tighten these eccentric rings here, tighten the set screw. And the last step for this installation is we have this little plug here, put a little silicone or suitable glue on, the, on this plug and insert it into the end of that pipe to cover the opening to keep it from filling with trash and dirt and uh, debris. After we got this all installed and tight, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to modify our hydraulic block here to, mo to make it work so we have more valve segments to uh, operate the real lift and the real fore and aft. So the first thing we need to do is take off the central hydraulic covers. And we already removed the bolts here, so we're just gonna pull it off. And currently, we have three valve bodies here. We have our deck plate function and our two-fold functions. And what we're going to do is we're going to split this valve apart and we're going to add in two more sections in the middle here and some more steel lines to feed our hydraulic functions for the real lift and the real fore and aft. And we're also going to make a modification to the computer here to add more uh, wires in and all those parts are in the kit. And in the assembly manual, there are instructions as to where those wires plug into this box, and we'll show you where they go. So we'll be doing that next. Okay, so we've taken out the four bolts here that hold this first segment on. And all we're going to do with this first segment is going to slide it forward, and we're going to put the next two new segments in between. Now, one thing to be mindful of as you're doing this is that in these valve bodies, they have a recess here for an O-ring. So make sure that you get an O-ring put in, in there where it belongs. And that we haven't lost our O-rings in the existing segments. We take our four bolts that come in the kit, they're longer than the original ones, and reassemble the segments. After we have our valve body segments mounted, the next thing we need to do is put some restrictor orifices in the two of the lines, and they're gonna go into this one here, the second one down from the top, and the third one down. So we're gonna take, have to take this line off, put one of these disc orifices in, uh, very small disc there, just drops into the, down into the hydraulic fitting between the uh, steel pipe and the fitting itself. When you put it in, just make sure it falls down in there flat, that it's not standing on end or, or not in the right position. It should be in the bottom of the fitting flat. So we just drop it down in. And sometimes you have to take and push it a little bit to get it flat. And then for this one, we take the steel line off and put the orifice down in. Again, make sure that's down in there flat. This steel line we can reattach. And now we're going to add two more steel lines onto the, the two ba valve body segments we just added and the, then later on we'll be doing the connections uh, at the end of the steel lines that go to the different functions. After we've put our orifices in here, the next thing we're going to do while we have some space to work is we're going to add in the electrical connections for these valves. And so you're going to have a bag in the kit with uh, different wiring components. It's inside this bag is where you're going to find those connections. So. There's two wiring harnesses like this. Real simple, they just plug right onto the valve. And push the wires so that they're gonna be out of the way for when we are gonna hook up the steel lines later. And then take a screwdriver and tighten the the retaining screw that holds each of these connections to the solenoid valve. 
So the next thing we would do then is add the steel lines that go from these ports out to the side. So in the kit, you're going to have these four steel lines. And when you look at them, there's going to be lefts and rights and two different lengths. And so you stack them in here. Um, the next shortest one, and then the longest one out last. And when we do that, there's also some rubber grommets that go around this steel line and it'll snap down into the mounting brackets of the backbone here. We've got our steel lines installed. They're mounted in the backbone bracket here. Our next step now is we're gonna make some modifications to the job computer itself. So all those parts are also in that same electrical bag. We're gonna have some uh, grommets here, or bulkhead fittings to well, seal up the box where we route the wires into it. And we have a couple different types of wiring harnesses depending on what we're adding in. We have two wire harnesses for the solenoid valves. We also have a wiring harness, we call it the X2 cable, that's gonna to mount to this side of the box and it's gonna uh, attach to sensors that go onto the arms for the real positioning. We have sensors on folding heads so that the computer knows where the head is in relation to, uh, let's say the parking position for when we're gonna fold the head. Whenever we fold the head up, we want this reel to be all the way down and all the way spread forward. So we have sensors on the arm that will send the signal back to the computer so we have to wire in that wiring harness. So we'll go ahead and we'll get the uh, job computer wired up. There's instructions in the operator's assembly manual here that show the wiring diagram and where they plug in inside this box. Also in the wiring kit is another set of these same instructions. Now that we've got our wires kind of pushed into the box through the, the fittings here, we need to connect them inside. The box is labeled on the outside as to the order of the wires here. So we have Y, one, two, three, four, five. Here's X1, X2. And then with, uh, in the assembly instructions, there's this uh, drawing. It's gonna tell us which wires go where. We just need to strip back the ends of the wires a little bit. Find the location they go into. Take a, a small screwdriver or something. Find the appropriate place. There's a little white button here. You just push that down push the wire down into that opening in front of it and release it and that will lock the wire in place. And then after you've got all the wires in, just go through and give each of them a little pull to make sure that they're seated and held in place tightly. And then we're done with this portion. We can put the cover back on it and start hooking up the other wires to the solenoid valves and getting that sorted out. After running our cable to our sensors here, we've left our sensors set back a ways from their stops. We'll adjust them later but they're all installed and connected. The next thing we're gonna do now is we're gonna hook all the hoses to the bulkhead fittings on the arms. The bulkheads are labeled, they're laser cut with uh, identification numbers. This one on the left side is P3, B4, L3, T3, I think it's B5. The, cable, the hoses themselves have corresponding labels. This one says P3. T3, L3. So we just connect these hoses to the corresponding place on the bulkhead. We'll repeat the same process on the right-hand side. And then 
later then we'll come back and we'll connect these hoses. These are labeled here, T3. It says this goes to the coupler. Uh, if you look in your assembly manual, it's gonna identify on the single point what's T3. And we're gonna be replacing this single point with a different one uh, that's plumbed now for using both the reel and the ICF, or the ICF reel and the end roll augers. And then these lines here will connect to the lines on here and they're identified as to where they connect also. So we'll get that, all those connected. We'll connect the hoses that are on the support arm that go between the fore and aft cylinder and the lift cylinder on each side as well. So we've gone through and we've connected all our hoses to the bulkheads as they're labeled. Follow your hydraulic plan for the hoses that go up here. Um, they're labeled B4 and B5. There's one that's labeled L3 and a couple labeled for the coupler. The L3 is a case drain line. The hose that was on this line here originally is now getting moved to the front, just like we moved the electrical coupler uh, connection. So you move that hose to here and just follow the, the uh, layout in the book that shows you the hydraulic valve and how the valves are labeled B1, A and B, one, two, three, four, and five, where it says B5, follow the line and hook your hose B5 to that line. Same on the other side. Uh, we have a line that says A5. Find which circuit off the drawing in the book is A5. Follow that steel line. Connect the A5 hose to that line. We've connected our hoses on our cylinders here. The next thing we would want to do is just go through and check all our connections, make sure they're tight. Even the connections that were already put together during pre-assembly, most of those are going to be just hand tight because they know when we're putting this pre-assembly together that you may have to reposition lines and reroute them a little bit. So they're just hand tight. And so go through, tighten them all up. And then the next thing we would do is we take, we have some spiral belting that we're going to wrap around these hoses to protect them and hold them in place. And we're going to, after that, going to replace the single point with a different single point that's plumb four, running both end row augers and the reel. Right now, this one is only plumb for end row augers. So that'll be our next steps to do that. After we've got all our hoses tight and everything is uh, where we want it to be, we want to protect these hoses on both sides. In the kit's gonna be a piece of this spiral hose wrap and you just take and work it on and work it around the hose, like, kind of like this and just work it around until we have it covering the hose and it's all protected. Um, another thing just to be aware of is when you are, check the routing of these hoses to make sure that you know, they're not gonna get pinched anywhere and that thing's gonna be interfering with their movement. Our next step in the process here is we're gonna change the single point out to a, uh, one with more functions on it. It's gonna have a valve to select between running the reel and the end row augers together or just the end row augers. And then after we've changed this out, it's a good idea to just go through and check all the hose connections, make sure they're all tight. Um, is during the pre-assembly, everything is put together hand tight so that we can easily reposition the hoses and the lines as we're assembling. So just go through, retighten all of them. Once we've done that, we're gonna be ready to bleed the system out. We'll hook our computer up, we'll hook the single point up to the combine. We'll bleed all the air out of the reel, both the up and down function and the fore and aft function. And then we'll, after that, we'll be ready to uh, put the main reel drive tube on the front for the paddles and finish up the, the rest of the installation.
On our new single point here, uh, this is how we've hooked up the lines. We had this uh, L3 line that was coming from the uh, real drive motor. We have a T that we've added in at this point here to T this return line back into the rest of the return system. And this hose is already existing and we've tapped it back into our hydraulic block here. From the motor, we had the lines that were labeled P and T, pressure and tank. The pressure one goes to the front here. The tank one comes to the back here on the bottom. And then we have this line here that we hooked back up that was our uh, original pressure line for the end row augers. It's now hooked to this side of, the, of this single point. We now have a valve in here that will let us select between whether we're going to run the real and the end row augers or just the end row augers. There's also a flow control valve here where we can fine tune the speed of the end row augers in relation to the speed that the reel is running at. But we've got our, our single point changed. We're hooked up to our combine. We're ready to uh, start testing the system and bleeding out. One of the first things we probably want to check is to make sure that our electrical connections we changed are working properly. And so we can just do that with our monitor, <clears throat> turn it on, and it defaults to the deck plate setting here. We can push the different buttons and we can look at our single point, our hydraulic block on the head and look at the uh, connections for the valve coils. And there's gonna be a light on those connections that's gonna come on as we switch to the different functions. So we can just go through our deck plate and our reel fore and aft and our reel up and down and see that the proper lights are turning on for the proper circuits and that we're getting pairs of lights and once we know that that's good, we'll be ready to uh, apply hydraulic pressure and make sure that we get all the air bled out of the system before we put the, the final tube in that supports the uh, reel paddles. The reason we wait for putting that reel tube in until the last is that as these reel arms are being bled out, they're not gonna both travel together right away. One's gonna come up faster than the other and we'll put twisting motion on that uh, real tube and we could damage that tube. So we do all our bleeding first before we do the final assembly of the real drive tube and the uh, real paddles. Valve body closest to the cab, closest to the job computer there. And we go our, our real fore and aft and we have two lights on there. <clears throat> And we go and check our real function for raise and lower. And last one we can check is just uh, for the folding functions. And they're going to go in a sequence on their own. And after a little bit, those two will time out if we don't actually fold the head. And it's going to revert back to the deck plates. Uh, it takes about 20 seconds for it to do that. And, uh, so we'll start our hydraulic system up and we will start to bleed the head. So we have hydraulic pressure coming. The first thing we'll do is we'll try and raise the head. So I push the button for that function. At the end of each stroke, you want to hold your button in the cab for 10, 15 seconds to force the oil through the uh, ports in the cylinder so we get the oil equalized on both sides of the cylinder. We'll do this several times until we're confident that our uh, cylinders are bled out, that both arms are traveling at the same speed and equal distance.
now I'm happy that these arms are traveling together equally. We'll switch to the uh, real fore and aft. After bleeding the system out, making sure that we got all the air out of the system, the next thing we want to do is check to make sure that our brackets are on our tube the, the way that we want them to be, that they're, the profiles are matching up. And once we're sure of that, we'll come back in, we'll weld the bracket in as we talked about earlier, put a weld on each side to make sure this bracket's not going to move and stay where we want it. One last thing we need to do here is we need to set our sensors so that they're uh, sending the signal back to the computer as to their position. This is important for the folding process on the head. Uh, the computer is going to be looking for a pair of sensors, one for the real lift and one for the real fore and aft. They have to be reading it, that the reel is in the correct position before it will allow the head to fold. So what we need to do as a final step is Make sure that the reel is fully extended forward and then lower it all the way down. And then we'll move on to setting the sensors. Uh, we'll set these sensors so that they're in line with the arm here and this uh, tab here. And what we're going to be looking for as we set them is there's a small LED light that shines in the base of that sensor and we'll just be setting our sensor either up and down on the slotted hole here and in and out for distance from this arm so that we're getting a light in this sensor. And same with this one here. We'll be setting our distance from the distance back in between here so that we get the light to come on in here give the signal back to the computer that the, the reel is in the correct position. And then before we uh, uh, actually try to fold the head, one other thing that we need to look at in the, uh, uh, the assembly manual is there's a bumper on the uh, wing of each side and that bumper has different size spacers depending on the model of the head. So you need to have a look at the instructions in the assembly manual. There's a chart there that's going to tell us whether we have to change that bumper if we put a spacer in or if we take the spacer that's there out or how it needs to be set up. Once we've done that, then we can uh, proceed to uh, check that the sensors are reading properly and the head will go into the folding process properly and we can continue with our testing. After we have our sensors set and we've changed our uh, stop block over here, we're kind of ready to uh, test the folding process a little bit. We have one last thing to change as far as parts go on here between the way it was figure configured from the factory and what we need to do for uh, with putting the reel on, and that's to change the uh, bonnet cylinder, the cylinder that lifts this bonnet during the folding process. So what we're going to do now is we're going to raise this bonnet, and we're going to just change this uh, cylinder out. This cylinder has a little bit shorter stroke, so that it doesn't raise this bonnet quite as far, so it will not interfere with uh, the reel tube and the paddles once it's all installed. These cylinders are left and right, it's just a matter of which side the ports face in relation to the mounting tab. Really simple to change. There's a connection point up here and a connection point at the bottom. Let me just change out the cylinder, this shorter one here. Our final step of the assembly process here before we 
uh, do the full test on it is to install the real tubes. Uh, the uh, left hand side is just a short tube held on with uh, six bolts. If you just take the bolts out, we'll put the tube on here. And then we have a plastic cap to insert in the end. Put a little silicone or a suitable glue on here that will hold it in place and insert it in the end of this tube. And then we're going to do the same on, uh, on the other side from the right. We have the long tube. We're going to insert it through the arm. There's a, uh, this eccentric ring to lock this tube to the bearing on that arm. So as we put this tube in, we'll want to make sure we put this ring on there. And we'll feed it through until we get it onto this coupler. In the uh, kit for this assembly, there is a small set screw. You put that set screw in here so it'll retain this, these pieces of this coupler. And then we can take the uh, three bolts out, put our tube on. Once it's on, we put the two bolts back in, remove the set screw, and put the third bolt in. After inserting our tube, getting it attached here, tightening our bolts, we'll tighten that eccentric ring on the bearing on the other arm, and we'll be ready to start putting our paddles on. Pretty easy to do. We just take one bolt out of them here. Twist it apart. Insert it over the tube and put the bolts back in. And we want to line this paddle up with the middle of the row. And then uh, once we have all our paddles on, we would come back and tighten these bolts, uh, tighten all three of them up evenly uh, to clamp the paddles onto the reel. One thing to make note of is that the shape, the, we want the paddles to be facing this direction so that as it brings the material around, it'll drop the material off the back of the paddle onto the into the head. If we were to mount the paddle the other way around so that the, 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 uh, this was the leading edge, that's going to bring material back around and throw back out in the front. So the two end paddles here are going to be mounted a little bit differently than the ones in the middle. We want them to be a little bit inside of the center of the row, just because of this bonnet here that has to fold up. And the divider, when it folds over, gives us a little bit more clearance. So we just a little bit to the inside of the row. After we have everything assembled, we have to adjust the reel height in relation to how far the paddles are off of the gathering chains. And the way we do that, we put the reel all the way down and all the way forward. And then we measure from the bottom of this tube to the uh, idler sprocket on the gathering chain. And the measurement we're looking for is 375 millimeters between the two. To make that adjustment, on this cylinder here, on the back side of it is a jam nut, and we can put a wrench onto the uh, cylinder shaft and thread it in or out of an eye bolt there to raise and lower the reel, the reel arms to get our setting of the height. Once that, he that height is set, then we know that where, wherever we position this reel, whether it's all the way out or all the way back, 
it's not going to be getting into the gathering chains and it's going to uh, clear everything properly and allow us to get full movement and function out of the reel. Those will be our reel function and end roll augers with the ball valve set to run both. And if we want to just run the end roll augers, we change our ball valve setting to shut the reel off and let the end roll augers turn. And then we can adjust the speed of the end roll augers with our flow control valve at the single point. In this position, we have both the reel turning and the end row augers. And if we move the ball valve to this position, only the end row augers will turn. Right here, this blue hat knob right in the middle is our flow control for the speed adjust. And the more I thread it out, the slower the end row augers are going to turn. The reel is going to maintain a constant speed. That's controlled by our oil flow from the combine on the reel setting in the combine. So we can turn our speed up in the combine to speed everything up and fine tune the adjustment for the speed on the end row augers here on the single point. And by turning it in, I can speed the end row augers up. Now we're ready to test the, the whole functionality of the folding system in, rela in regards to how the reel works. And what it should do is when we select the fold function on the computer, it's going to automatically move the reel in the down position and fully extend it forward. And then it'll automatically go into the folding process where it's going to raise the bonnets and remove the lock pins and fold the wings over. So we'll start with, we'll push the button, it's, the monitor is saying it's looking for the reel to go forward. As the wings come down and fold over, we want to watch how everything is coming down, watch for anything that looks like it's going to be interfered with as far as clearance, anything that's going to get pinched. Okay, an alternate uh, installation time for this bonnet cylinder would also be now when the head is folded up. It gives us pretty good access to the side of the head here. Um, maybe a little easier to get to this cylinder, to change this cylinder out from the long one to the shorter one. Also when this head is folded up now, it's a good time to look in through here. We have our support tube that we put in in one of the very first steps. We want to look to make sure that it's got some clearance, that maybe we need to readjust that tube, swing it a little bit further back towards the, the combine. Uh, if you look in through at this one here, we're very close to uh, our hydraulic hoses on our end row augers. Uh, it would probably be advisable to actually move this tube back a little bit. So check that as well. We don't want to be bending those hydraulic lines when the head's folding over. If everything tests out real good that way, we're happy with everything, then we would take and put all the covers over the hydraulics and the electrical, and we'd be done with the installation.